Ladies and gentlemen, dziękuję za zaproszenie. This event well fits with the United Nations core work that includes a strengthening international cooperation for social development, particularly in the areas of poverty eradication, productive employment, and decent work for all. We strive for social inclusion for disadvantaged and marginalized groups, including older persons, youth, persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, women, and people living in poverty. Our work has gained more urgency in these uncertain times defined by the COVID-19 pandemic, widening social and economic inequalities and the climate change. The COVID-19 pandemic has reversed recent gains in human development. It has forced more than 100 million people into extreme poverty and close to 120 million people into chronic hunger. More than 300 million additional people lacked adequate access to food in 2020 and could result in an additional 9.3 million wasted food and 2,600,000 stunned children by 2022. Now, COVID-19 reinforced pre-existing inequalities and exacerbated the vulnerabilities of many marginalized and disadvantaged populations, women and children, two billion informal workers, and people living in extreme poverty have been particularly hard hit. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development commits to leaving no one behind in realizing the 17 Sustainable Development Goals to fulfill this promise to all people of our world. Social economic development must be inclusive, namely development must benefit all citizens equitably. Dear friends, Global consultations to map our common agenda when the UN celebrated its 75th anniversary clearly show that people want a future where they are empowered to shape their destinies. Social and Solidarity Economy, SSE, these organizations working in this area are designed to benefit people and planet as opposed to simply maximize, maximizing shareholder value. You know, they share wealth with members more equitably and thereby addressing social exclusion by reaching out and incorporating marginalized groups in their value and supply chain, creating ownership of assets and means of production and thus a people-centered and the planet sensitive SSE approach would address both the people and the planet dimensions of the sustainable development goals. A group of UN entities, along with other stakeholders, have formed a United Nations Task Force on Social and Solidarity Economy with the aim of promoting this form of enterprise because SSE enterprises consist of enterprises and organizations that have explicit economic and social and often environmental objectives that involve varying degrees and forms of cooperatives, associatives and solidarity relations between workers, producers and consumers and practice workplace democracy and self-management and cooperatives are the core members of FS SSC. You know, to better measure cooperative sec uh, sectors contribution to socioeconomic development and the implementation of the 2030 agenda, the Committee for the Promotion and Advancement of Cooperatives called COPAC recently produced the standards for collecting data of cooperatives, which has been adopted by the ILO International Conference of Labor Statisticians in 2019, that is a couple of years ago, and is undergoing pilot testing in a few countries. So across the world, 
cooperatives promote sustainable development in all its three dimensions, as earlier I mentioned, social, economic, and environmental. And they have a significant presence, cooperatives, in both developed and developing countries, serving more than one billion members or clients. As a group, they employ more than 100 million people worldwide. The United Nations issues a biannual resolution recognizing that cooperatives in their various forms promote the fullest possible participation in the economic and social development of local communities and all people. And the UN in its report, the Secretary General in, this, in its report, pays particular attention to the inclusion of women, youth, older persons, persons with disabilities, and indigenous peoples, whose participation strengthens economy and social development and contributes to the eradication of poverty and hunger, also within the family, where all these social groups meet. And the resolution recognizes that uh, cooperatives and other social organizations are important for supporting socially inclusive policies while working on adaptation and mitigation to climate change. And we are actually aware that the social economic support progress uh, uh, in, in many sustainable development goals is taking place and has to be strengthened. So dear friends, one of the sustainable development goals, and I'm talking about goal 11, aims to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Look at the target 11.1 of goal 11. And there are many other targets under this goal that are relating to affordable housing, accessible and sustainable transportation systems for all, older people, younger people, um, people who might have disabilities, parents with the small children, or someone who might have broken a leg and have a disabling condition for a while. You know, transportation has to be accessible for all people. And target 11.7 stands out as it refers to universal access to safe, inclusive, accessible, green, and public spaces. In particular, as I mentioned earlier on, for women and children, all the persons and persons with disabilities and these groups, all of them, as I said, belong to families. This target clearly refers to making life more livable for households in the cities. And indeed, an inclusive family is needed in order to achieve goal 11. Now, if I think of the Venice Declaration, it offers practical steps on how to achieve Goal 11, emphasizing an inclusive family perspective. The 10 focus areas featured in the declaration, including housing, education, new technologies, healthcare, and safety, are, you know, and let's not forget leisure, well, all of these address the needs of families and cities pledged to report on their achievements in the focus areas, which is a very practical approach, bringing us closer to making cities more sustainable and livable. And that is why I'm very happy that more and more cities and regions are joining the declaration and pledged to take action for families according to its guidelines. So why is inclusive family perspective so important in planning for sustainable cities? Well, primarily decent affordable housing is fundamental to live in a family that is a healthy family. Stable housing is critical for positive child development. And when families experience housing instability, children's educational, behavioral, and cognitive development suffers. Children also tend to have harder time to explore the outer world without the experience of an early safe home. Housing stability or instability impacts families' life directly. And overall social cohesion 
in any given society. And moreover, good living conditions in the city, access to affordable transportation, good schools and green spaces give a good start to young families. And of course, all generations in the family. And yet, despite this basic knowledge, policies often do not address these basic human needs. In fact, as it turns out, cities are becoming more and more expensive and less and less livable for families. So we are faced with the shortages of affordable housing. We are faced with the fact that low income families are especially affected by the lack of housing and substandard housing with currently over 800 million people living in substandard housing. We are faced with unchecked urbanization and a domination of housing markets by commercial players influencing housing patterns. Now, you know, faced with these challenges, we need con concrete actions from city authorities to make sure city planning focuses on fulfilling the needs of families, of people in general, which implies more social housing investments in infrastructures and making sure that, you know, there are many green spaces for all generations to enjoy. And let me comment on such program, Rajna Na Zvoim, family on its own, which is a good example of successful cooperation between government and private sector to ensure access to housing to young families in Poland. Beautiful country, by the way, that I visited a couple of times when I, I was much younger. And, and, you know, I was talking about uh, the importance of cooperatives. There are also many cooperatives and other SSE organizations around the world providing affordable housing to their members. And they also need public recognition and encouragement so ladies and gentlemen, return to the pre-COVID status is not an option. Our recovery strategy must aim for a better, more inclusive, more resilient and greener development path that will accelerate progress in the SDGs. And this requires a renewed multilateralism and global solidarity, a new social contract that is rooted in the principles of human rights, equity, and cooperation. It requires two changes in the patterns of production and consumption to promote behavioral adjustments that conserve natural resources. And it requires a strong push for social and solidarity forms of enterprises. And now allow me to thank you in a terrible Polish, but I hope you will appreciate it. Dziękuję za Thank you for your attention. <laughs>